The S125 Neva, whose NATO reporting name is SA-3 Goa, is one of the most iconic Soviet-made low to medium altitude air defense systems. Although its overall combat success is not brilliant, this missile made a name for itself by shooting down an F-117 Nighthawk. Today, we're investigating the S-125, the first and only stealth fighter killer. The S-125 Neva is the first Soviet-made low to medium altitude air defense system. Its export variant is called Pichora. Even though the system was introduced in 1961, about 30 countries, some of whom are NATO members, still trust the S-125 to protect their airspace after over 60 years. Before we start, we owe a special thanks to the Saturnista Sotile Historia channel for allowing us to use its beautiful footage. If you want to learn unique information about the history of the Finnish Defense Forces, don't miss Saturnista Sotile Historia. The story of the Neva began in the early 1950s when the USSR decided to replace its anti-aircraft guns with missiles. Initially, Moscow naturally prioritized the S-25 and S-75 programs due to the intense threat of the US strategic bombers. These high-altitude air defense systems were ineffective against threats with high maneuver capability at low altitudes. So, in 1956, Moscow Aviation Plant No. 32 began to work on a new low to medium altitude surface-to-air missile system called S-125. The trials began in 1958. The S-125 entered the service in 1961 and was first deployed around Moscow. The 2K-11 Krug, whose NATO reporting name is SA-4 Ganev, and 2K-12 Kub, whose NATO reporting name is SA-6 Gainful, were responsible for air defense on the front. In conjunction with the S-75, this system provided air defense protection for the rear areas. In this last role, they were not subordinate to the ground forces, but worked integrated into the overall army or front air defense network. The S-125 is the name of the entire system. The initial missile variant called V-600 or 5V-24 has a large solid field booster section which burns for 2.6 seconds and then separates. The rectangular fins on the booster rotate through 90 degrees at launch. The missile body is smaller and has a solid fueled sustainer rocket. It is fitted with four fixed fins at the aft and four movable control surfaces on the forward. The command guided V600, whose NATO reporting name is SA3A, receives guidance signals via antennas on the rear fins. It can track an incoming target with a speed of 700 meters per second. But the maximum target speed cannot exceed 300 meters per second during the tail chase. The warhead with a lethal burst radius of 12.5 meters is armed after the missile has traveled 50 meters. The Doppler radar fuse is activated by a command signal when the weapon is 300 meters from the launcher. It has an effective operating distance of 10 to 50 meters. If the missile fails to intercept, another signal is sent to either change the trajectory or self-destruct. The V600 has a length of 5.88 meters, a diameter of 550 millimeters, a wingspan of 1.22 meters, and a launch weight of 933 kilograms. The missile's 60 kg high explosive fragmented warhead with a Doppler radar proximity and contact fuse contains 3,500 5.4 gram fragments. Its effective range is between 4 to 15 km, while its effective altitude is between 100 to 10,000 meters, in other words, 328 to 32,800 feet. Its speed is Mach 3.5. The improved V601 variant, also known as 5V27, is 7 cm longer and 20 kg heavier than its predecessor. Its maximum effective range is 25 km. The V601, whose NATO reporting name is SA3B, can intercept a target flying at an altitude of 14,000 meters, in other words, 45,930 feet. The V601D is effective between the range of 3.5 to 28 km. The missile can intercept a target flying at an altitude of 20,000 meters, 
in other words 65,615 feet and track faster targets. The 5V27DE missile has a range of 32 kilometers. Its early models of the S25 had the 5P71 twin arm launcher. In 1973, the 5P73 quadruple rail launcher was introduced into service. Missiles are typically transported in pairs on modified ZIL-131 or ZIL-157 6x6 trucks. They are loaded onto the launchers with the aid of a conveyor. Even though loading a single missile takes only a minute, the system can be ready to fire in about 50 minutes due to missile preparation, track transit and other reloading procedures. Typically, the four launchers at an S-125 site are positioned in a hand-shaped pattern with the thumb consisting of a reverted P-15 and PRV-11 long-range search radars and the palm of the SNR-125 fire control radar. The C-band P-15 long-range early warning and target acquisition radar, whose NATO reporting name is Flatface, has a detection range of up to 210 km, but its real effective range is limited to 150 km. The E-band PRV-11 height finder radar, whose NATO reporting name is SideNet, is effective at a range of 180 km and an altitude of 32,000 meters, in other words, 104,985 feet. The I-band SNR-125 fire control radar, whose NATO reporting name is Low Blow, has a maximum acquisition range of 110 km. Its tracking range is between 40 to 85 km, depending on the target size, altitude and operational conditions. Simultaneously, it can track six aircraft and guide one or two missiles. Later, the fire control system was enhanced with a 25km range TV camera for operating in heavy ECM environment. The ship-based variant of the S-125, the M1 Walna, is the first naval air defense missile system of the Soviet Navy. Its NATO reporting name is SAN-1 Goa. Unlike the land-based variant, the M1 is coupled with the EF-band MR310 fire control and D-band MR500 illumination radars. The launcher of the Walna is two-arm ZIF-102. The Soviet Navy equipped its Katyn, Kanin and Kashin class destroyers and Kinda and Krista Van class cruisers with this system. Three Rajput class destroyers of the Indian Navy still have the M1s. Some countries developed the modernized variants of the S-125. Many of them include only minor software and hardware upgrades. However, some companies also offer more comprehensive modernization packages. For example, the Belarusian Tetraander has increased the range to 35 km with the S-125 2TM Pichora 2TM variant. According to the company, this version has also better ECM resistance and can detect air targets with a radar cross-section of 0.02 square meters. So far, Azerbaijan and Vietnam have preferred this modernization package. The Ukrainian Aurotechnica company also offers the upgraded S-125 2D Pichora 2D version, which uses extended range missiles and a new radar station built on solid state elements. Another Ukrainian company, Luch Design Bureau, also developed a similar modernization package. This variant uses the new X-band FCR-125 radar, which can detect an air target with a radar cross section of 5 square meters from 130 kilometers. Its 5V27D M2 missiles have an effective range of 40 km and an effective altitude of 25,000 meters, in other words, 82,000 feet. Currently, Ukraine is operating this variant in the second echelon of Kyiv's air defense. Developed by the Russian Almazante company, the S-125 Pichora 2M is a self-propelled variant mounted on the 6x6 MZKT-8021 truck. It has a twin-arm launcher. This design increases the tactical deployment capability and decreases the setup time to 25 minutes. The Pichora 2M is used with the new Costa 2E2 early warning radar. According to Russian sources, this radar can detect air targets with a radar cross section of 0.01 square meters, and the new missiles have a 51% kill ratio at a distance of 30 kilometers. Egypt, Myanmar, Syria, Turkmenistan, Vietnam, and Venezuela have already preferred the Pichora 2M. 
Similarly, North Korea mounted the twin arm S125 launcher on the Kraus 255B 6x6 truck. But there is no reliable information about the capability enhancements other than the mobility of this variant. Perhaps the most intriguing modernization program was conducted by Poland. This country replaced many analog components of the S125 with digital ones and mounted on a quadruple arm launcher rail onto the hull of VZT-1, an armored recovery vehicle based on the T-55. The new system takes its name Neva SC from the initials of the Polish words Samobieżny and Cyfrowy, meaning self-propelled and digital. Poland also mounted the fire control radars onto the Maz 543 8x8 trucks, former Scud missile firing vehicles of the Polish ground forces. 17 S-125s were converted to Neva SC. It is known that Poland gave some of these systems to Ukraine. Cuba also developed a T-55 hull-mounted variant of the S-125. The S-125 was baptized with fire in the War of Attrition. According to Egyptian sources, the Pichoras shot down nine Israeli F-4 Phantoms in this war. But Israel has confirmed only five losses. During the War of Attrition, Israel tried to capture the S-125 many times to examine it. But all operations failed. According to Arab sources, during the 1973 Yom Kippur War, the Egyptian and Syrian S-125 batteries launched 174 and 131 missiles and shot down 21 and 33 Israeli aircraft, respectively. But Israel has acknowledged only six losses caused by the S-125s. During this war, Israel finally found a chance to examine the Pichara and develop counter tactics and counter measures against it. Initially, the USSR did not give the S-125s to North Vietnam, worrying that China might steal and copy the system. Still, the Pichara joined the Vietnam War in the early 1970s. Its only known success happened in 1972, when an S-125 shot down an F-4 Phantom of the US Marine Corps in 1972. On August 24, 1976, an RF-5A reconnaissance aircraft of the Turkish Air Force was shut down by a Soviet S-125 on the grounds of airspace violation. Angola claimed that it shot four Mirage F-1s of the South African Air Force down by the S-125s in 1980. But the South Africans denied it and declared only two aircraft were damaged and they were able to return to their bases safely. During the eight-year Iran-Iraq War, Iraq intensively used the S-125 against Iran. But the only confirmed kill of the system happened on June 25, 1980 by shooting down an Iranian F-5E. Similarly, the Iraqi S-125s could only shoot down an Allied fighter, a US F-16, in the 1991 Gulf War. We may say that the combat performance of the S-125 had been poor until the 1999 Kosovo War. But in this war, it made a name for itself by shooting down an F-117, the first and only known stealth aircraft kill. Of course, the Serbians made some local improvements to the system. The radar transmitter and receiver were modified to use long wavelengths and low frequency radio signals to enable the detection of the F-117s. Also, the US Air Force, which saw its stealth Nighthawks as invincible, made some mistakes. These aircraft had used the same attack and return paths during their missions. So, the underestimated Serbs could successfully set up a trap. They detected and tracked the F-117, which came from an expected route. And the so-called obsolete S-125 shut the Nighthawk down on March 27, 1999. Besides, an F-16 and an unmanned aerial vehicle fell victim to the system during the war. At first glance, it was a tremendous success. Still, we should address that the Serbian S-125 batteries launched 188 missiles and could only shoot down three aircraft. So, the Pichora was not so successful in total. On March 17, 2015, a Syrian Pichora shut down a US MQ-1 Predator. Three years later, the US, British and French forces launched 103 cruise missiles targeting eight Syrian military sites. Even though the Russian sources claim that the S-125s destroyed five incoming missiles, the US Department of Defense stated no Allied missiles were shut down. 
in April 2022, an Su-35 was reportedly shot down by a Ukrainian S-125. The same year, an S-125 shot down the F-A-18E of the legendary US pilot Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell. Except for the shooting down of the F-117 in 1999, we cannot say that the S-125 is a successful air defense system. Still, it is the hero of an unprecedented achievement, killing a stealth aircraft. This only victory is undoubtedly enough to make the S-125 a true legend. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.